Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's Wednesday, April 17th, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the Transportation Committee. I'm Councilwoman Hutt, Chair of the Committee, and I'm joined today by Council Members Park and Warman. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Hutt. Here. Park. Here. Hernandez, absent. Raman. Here. Yaroslavsky, also absent. Uh, three members and a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Members, today we have six items on the agenda. Before we get to them, let's begin by taking public comment. Mr. Clerk, uh, please provide the public comment instructions. Members of the public wishing to speak on only one item shall be given an opportunity to speak on that item for up to one minute. Members of the public speaking on more than one agenda item shall be allowed to speak for up to one minute per item, up to a total of two minutes per meeting. Members of the public shall have the opportunity to address the committee on non-agenda items with this, within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Transportation Committee, referred to as general public comment. Each speaker shall be allowed one minute of general public comment per meeting with up to no more than three minutes per speaker. Thank you so much. Hakeem, will you conduct public comment, please? Yes, Madam Chair, there's only one speaker on the docket. That would be Mike Greenspan. Thank you. Come Can to you the podium please? and state the items you wish to speak on. Mike Greenspan, all items and public comment. Three minutes. Okay, first of all, let's, all right, let's look at these things. After all, I... Okay, we're, we're looking for something for a low carbon transit operation program. Nothing like a, a state, $73 billion in the red, spending money. I just can't get over it. I mean, in better fiscal years, it, it would be a nice thing to look at. But when you're $73 mil billion in the hole, some things just aren't possible. I hate to break the news. Well, now we're looking at other things too. Oh, we want to electrify everything, which means basically the people in the poor communities will be on the bus or on their feet because they aren't going to be able to afford these vehicles. It's not as if they live over there in the high pollutant council district 11 with Brentwood and Palisades. No, they live in places like Heather Hutt's district where they don't have all those big time vehicles and everything. So I guess they're just gonna be left out. <laughs> Have a good walk, get some good walking shoes. You'll need it. Now we're talking about transit services and mobility for pedestrians, cyclists and vehicles. Are you kidding? Crossing the street is a sport in LA. It's really, you take your life in your hands. People run red lights like nobody's business. And of course, where are the officers? Where are the people with their ticket quotas? Suddenly, they aren't there. And when, they, when you need them the most to pull those speeders over and to put a nice dent in their wallet to teach them don't do that, or their Bloomingdale's purse. Now, I wanted to take some time on public comment for general public comment because we have an interesting proposal I've always been talking about they're always coming to us for more sales tax money for Metro and the other 25 transit agencies in LA County. Um, of course, Foothill Transit, which has a great lobbyist, a couple of their proposals, they get 40%, leaving the other 25 agencies, including Metro, to divide up the remainder of the pie, the 60%. But my thing is, you're always coming to us for more money. When are you going to go fare free? Somebody in the runoff in my council district, Burgos, says that 6% of the operating revenue comes from fares. And of course, Foothill Transit, that number is 7%, and I've been mentioning that long before I ever met Jillian Burgos. So it's time to get rid of the fares. And I want to thank um, Tracy Park and Kunt Raman for showing up. They didn't show up. At, All at right, that's Street. your time. Thank you very much. And that exhausts public comment. There are no other speakers on the queue. Thank you. I'd like to now close public comment. Let's jump into our agenda. There's, did you sign up at the kiosk? I don't have to sign up. I want to speak. 
Certainly. How many items did you want to speak on? Well, I want to speak on all items of general public comment. I want to make sure that you know you have your time. Oh, that's good. Yes. One of the few council members who might avoid indictment. Let's give her a hand. All right. So, look at all this shit. I was down at the Ethics Commission. I'll get more to that in a second. Look at Caltrans and Dot and all this bullshit. Look at all this bullshit. Fucking trains aren't on time. Dirty, filthy, disgusting buses and taking away lanes of traffic and causing EMS emergency delays. I mean, what the fuck do you think you're doing with our streets? I mean, I have tried in vain to tell Councilman Kevin DeLion, the one-term failure that on 7th Street and 8th Street, that I have timed ambulances trying to get through there, taking seven, eight, nine times longer on an EMS call, people dying of heart attacks because they can't get through your little bullards. See... What Tracy Park did was very clever because she's very smart. See, she took an area near a park in a very wealthy area, and she got rid of all the public parking and put bike lanes on each side of the street with the white bullards. Now the public can't park there anymore. She got rid of the homeless. And then Cunt Nithya Raman did the same thing over in Forest Lawn Drive, except she made red lines preventing all parking and now the people that work at the studios now they have to pay to park because there's no more street parking that's another way and you do it under la dot regulations but isn't this supposed to be about moving vehicles and moving people rather than displacing people and causing people to lose vital resources so now we get into the general so as you know the cop over there at the end likes to grab people by the arm and shove them. And I have an ankle injury. And that happened on Friday because I attempted to speak at a public meeting just exactly like I'm doing right now. But your cocksucker that runs your council and the rest of you cocksuckers sat there and let it happen. So now I was at the Ethics Commission today to see what they're trying to do. Well, I have good news. They're giving Rick Jacobs a 50% fucking deduction on his illegal campaigning and lobbying of you people. And then they gave 50% discounts for everybody. So you can tell John Lee that he should be able to get 10 cents on the dollar, right? We have no rule of law in this city. But the worst part is Heather Hutt has never received a single vote of the electorate, but she's serving 50% of a council term. Why? Is Thank that? you. That would be your time. Now I'd like to close public comment and let's jump onto our agenda. I'd like to take up non controversial items. Those will be items number one through two. Mr. Clark, can you please read the items into the record? Item one, council file 15-0315-S9 is a Los Angeles Department of Transportation report and resolution relative to authority to submit a project application for the State of California Department of Transportation fiscal year 2023 through 2024 low carbon transit operations program. Item two is in uh, council file 23-0790 is an LADOT report relative to Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transit Authority Open and Slow Streets Grant Program Cycle 5. Thank you. Does any member wish to discuss items 1 and 2? No. Okay. Um, then on item 1, I recommend we approve the DOT recommendations. And item 2, I recommend we approve the DOT recommendations. Members on these items, I am asking for your I vote. Mr. Clerk, can you please call a roll? Council Member Hutt? Aye. Park? Yes. Hernandez? Absent. Raman? Yes. Yaroslavsky? Also absent. Thank you. Now let's move on to the next items. Mr. Clerk, can you please read items number four and five? 
Item four is a city administrative officer report relative to authority to apply for the fiscal year 2024 low or no emission grant program overseen by the United States Department of Transportation. Item five, council file 23-0600-S101 uh, is adopted budget recommendation relative to the status of the five-year investment plan regarding vehicle and passenger electrification. Thank you. DOT, do you mind coming to the table so that uh, you could give us a brief presentation on the report before us? Madam Chair, I have a portion to your report. Oh, and Sia. And then just for clarification, are we taking up item four? Four and five. Okay. Um, so I, if... Um, you are okay with it. I'll defer to the CAO on item four, and then I'll go ahead and speak to item five. Thank you, CAO. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, this is Jennifer Lau with the CAO office. Today I'm going to provide a brief summary for the fiscal year 2024 low or no emission grant programs. The administrator for this grant is the U.S. DOT. The purpose of the grant is to support the transition of the nation's transit fleet to the lowest polluting and most energy efficient transit vehicle by supporting the purchase or lease of zero emission and low emission transit buses, acquisition, construction, and leasing of required supporting facilities. So the eligible applicants is the city, county, state, or native tribal governments. Application deadline is April 25th, 2024. So this office received one project proposal from the DOT. The project is purchase of electric commuter buses and bus charges to transfer the commute in the Love Valley. DOT will install 50 electric vehicle chargers with 100 dip dispensers in LA DOT's Love Bus Yard in Silma. There is a match funding requirement for this grant program. 20% of the total project cost, the amount of the uh, matching funding is approximately $9.8 million. 5% must be used for workforce development activities. So the Department of DOT proposed to use a Prop A local transit assistance fund to fund, to fund funding for this uh, project. The grant award date is expected to be July 2024. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question, members. I'm not sure if you have questions, but. For the grant application, what other funds are available for the 10 million match required if Prop A is oversubscribed? Yeah, I have a discussion with DOT. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask uh, David Summer to the table. He will explain other alternative funding opportunities. Okay. Good afternoon, council members. Um, so, uh, for, first off, the um, the expenditures under this grant, the large amount of expenditures, we wouldn't expect until budget year 25-26. So relative to the existing budget that's being adopted for us, there wouldn't be major expenditures from Prop A. Um, if we would have a challenge putting aside the match funds for $10 million in 25-26, uh, we would be looking at um, funding uh, through potentially a municipal improvement corporation in Los Angeles, MICWA, uh, financing, uh, and then would be able to repay that uh, through uh, through the grant and and you know other means over time. But that would be a that would be an alternative to offload, I guess, the, both the match and a little bit of like a, if there was a cash flow problem, uh, getting access to those funds in advance. Thank you. I have another question. Um, what's the breakdown of our current bus fleet and what percentage is electric and what percentage is fossil? I'll take that. Um, we are currently at about 120, 155 
battery electric buses. Uh, some of those include buses that are currently still being delivered, uh, but by and large, by the end of uh, next month, we should have 155 battery electric buses in our fleet. And I think that we're uh, currently around 400 buses. So that's gonna be close to, I would say maybe like 40% of our fleet would be battery electric at that point. Thank you. Yeah. Members, you have questions? No? No? Okay. Thank you. Great. So then, um, then let's move on to five. I'll actually ask David to stay up here, and if, if I could ask Brian Lee to join me. Or is it Jay? Sorry. So, Chair, members of the committee, um, joining me are David Summers to my left, Jay Kim, Brian Lee, um, to provide you an update on the city's electrification of our transit fleet. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, first off, I just wanted to give a brief update and thank you. I was here a couple weeks ago uh, for the driver wages that did get approved and uh, the drivers actually voted and, and approved the increase in wages. And so uh, I think all the drivers are happy. I just want to thank you again for your support. Um, currently, the DOJ operates around 400 buses uh, to operate our commuter express, LA, LA Now, Dash, and City Ride services. Of those 400 buses, about 115 electric vehicles have been delivered to date. Another 40 are on their way, um, that, as mentioned, will be here in a couple months. Um, to operate these vehicles, we use uh, transit bus yards, and we own three out of the four transit facilities. One of the facilities we do not own, um, and currently they are in various stages of electrification. Um, as a temporary charging solution, we have adopted the 411 Vermont charging station, uh, which is a temporary solution which will be done in May of 2024. Um, as well as our downtown yard facility, which operates our downtown dash, will have 35 chargers available by the end of 2024 and have uh, 70 buses to be able to charge there or not more. Um, the approximate total cost to electrify these yards is around $67 million. We currently have a $35 million gap, um, and that does not include the purchasing of one yard that we don't own that could cost up to $25 million, um, and that does not include construction. Um, LA DLT Trans Transit will continue to go after competitive funds, such as the FTA loan no grant that you just heard, as well as um, competitive uh, funds that will become available through, uh, through the federal government. Uh, we'll be very active in going after those grants. Um, as for the 2028 Olympics, uh, we currently have had um, preliminary discussions with LA Metro as they're the lead agency in terms of transporting patrons to the event. Um, we've had discussions regarding uh, utilizing retired buses for the event as they will need uh, a, lot of, a lot of buses to transport the people as well as we'll have to continue to operate our normal services. Um, in addition, we are looking to um, help by providing Metrolink stations or parking ramp facilities as cars will not be allowed to venues and we'll be utilizing those as mobility hubs with LA Metro um, for the games. Um, happy to answer any questions that you might have regarding electrification, um, the yards, and the buses. Thank you. I, I have a question uh, that, that you just brought up that wasn't in my preliminary questions, and it's about retired buses and transportation. Are you thinking of retooling them so that they're electrified, or or how how's that work? Sure, I'd like to answer that question. Um, so buses usually have a when we buy through federal funding, they have a 12 year lifespan cycle or 500,000 miles. And so the CNG buses that were currently purchased in 2012, as an example, are, are reaching their useful life in 2024. And so once they reach that useful life, we would at that point replace them with an electric bus. Um, and then that bus could be used or repurposed for uh, the potentially Olympic Games, or we could put that bus into service and use electric bus for the Olympic Games. But at that point, we'll have to have a discussion with other Metro on what we would want to do with those retired buses. But in general, once the buses are retired, if it weren't for the Games, we would be um, having them put down and or up for auction for the public. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Questions, members? Any questions? Oh, okay. All right. Then, um, if there's no objection, here are my following uh, recommendations on item four. 
I recommend we approve the CAO's recommendations. And on item five, I recommend we approve the item and instruct DOT to report back in 90 days pursuant to council budget instructions. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Hutt? Yes. Park? Yes. Hernandez? Absent. Raman? Yes. Yaroslavsky? Absent. Three ayes and these um, items have been approved, Madam Chair. Thank you. Then um, let's move on to item number six, Mr. Clerk. Can you please read item number six and then you have an amendment? Item six is council file 18-0244-S4, an LADOT report relative to proposition A, status and forecast for transit services. Do you wanna continue? No, let's finish. Add the amendment and then continue. <laughs> okay. Council Member Raman has an amendment. We'd like to add the amendment, if you don't mind reading it, and then, then I'll make changes. As well. Sure, the amendments to item six, again, council file 18-0244-S4. Um, replace recommendation two in full with Direct LADOT to in initiate a revised TSA to identify potential service changes that would align operational expenses to the reliable revenues forecasted while still providing a core, well-functioning service. The revised, re revised TSA should take into account A, current and potential long-term travel changes brought about by COVID-19 pandemic and related commuting and travel patterns. B, performance data, rider surveys, adopted guidelines, and performance metrics that City Council already approved pursuant to Council File 18-0244, as well as operational conditions imposed by the utilization of battery electric buses. C, the consideration of existing and new services or service partnerships with other agencies that provide public transit to cultural and tourist destinations on an ongoing basis and for upcoming major events like the FIFA World Cup and the LA 28 Olympics. D, sponsorship opportunities, public-private partnerships, and other service provision subsidization methods as appropriate for different services and service routes. Also, um, replace recommendation three in full with direct LADOT to evaluate the current free fare practices on DASH to report their benefits and impacts on ridership, ridership experience, and revenue. Thank you for um, the amendments and reading the amendments, Mr. Clerk. Um, are there any objections to holding this item? Members? Okay, great. Then um, I'd like to hold this item until June 5th. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, DOT, can you get provide a brief presentation before we hold the item? Sorry. Ab absolutely, Chair. Um, so I will have Brian Lee walk you through um, a high-level summary of what the report um, includes, um, but primarily what we want to communicate is <clears throat> when the transit system analysis was last adopted in 2018, we lived in a very different world, particularly as it pertains to travel patterns and transportation in general. Um, and so since then, um, we have seen impacts on ridership, which have impacted our Prop A fund. Um, but in addition to that, we see this as an opportunity to be able to go back, take another look at that Prop A fund, how we run our services, who our core customer serve, uh, customers are, and how can we be more creative and efficient with the services that we put out given um, the direction we have to electrify and the quality of service we want to put out to for our Angelinos. Um, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Brian Lee to walk you through the report. Okay. Uh, 
Good evening again. Uh, Prop A is a half cent sales tax that passed in 1980 to fund transit services. Mm -hmm. Prop A is distributed, is distributed through the city through two different mechanisms. Uh, once we, we get Prop A through uh, population, and we also get Prop A through a formula funding through LA Metro. Um, Prop A is the main source that we use to fund our transit operations and pay for transit staff. Uh, we do get other sources of funding that include Prop C, Measure R, Measure M, and STA, SB1 funds. And in 2018, the City Council directed LADOT to perform what we call a transit service analysis. Um, we took a look at all the census data of all the different neighborhoods throughout the council offices and throughout the city, and came up with recommendations to add routes throughout the city that would include routes like Boyle Heights, Somar, Canoga Park, North Hollywood, Pacoima, and improvements to Dash in general, like adding weekend service, improving on-time frequencies, going from like eight minutes to five minute frequencies, as well as um, you know, just expanding routes throughout the city. In 2018, uh, these forecasted costs would cost around 154 million at that time. Um, those costs have changed today due to driver cost increases, uh, increase in operations, fuel, uh, et cetera. And so the cost to operate those services today went from 154 million to 211 million. The cost to operate uh, transit services in general, including um, staff time, um, Metrolink stations, electrification, et cetera, can cost up to 211 million. Um, and what we receive in actual uh, funding revenue um, is around 215 million. And so the, there, is a, there is a definite gap in terms of what we receive and what is, uh, how much we have to spend. Um, that can look up to like, you know, 30, 40 million dollars a year potentially. And so pausing the TSA right now uh, is, is financially what is responsible in terms of taking a look at our services and what we can afford today. Um, also, the institution of dash fares could save approximately, uh, um, and also uh, pausing the TSA could save a total of about 60 million if we pause today and reinstitute the dash fares. Happy to answer any questions. Is that the conclusion? Thank you. Yes, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Do you have questions? Members? Go, go, go. go right ahead. So thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm just curious, are we taking a holistic look at our fair policy generally beyond just DASH? Or are we just focusing on DASH? No, the intent is to look at all of our services inclusive of fair structure. Okay, good. Um, and then I'm wondering how many, if any, of our existing services may be um, duplicative of things offered by Metro, so like our dial-a-ride, those sorts of things. Sure. Um, we do run transit services on top of Metro as well. Um, there's transit buses that we run on the same streets as Metro. Um, it is du duplicative in the sense that City Ride is our paratransit service, um, but it doesn't just cover like those with disabilities. Those also, also cover trips for different reasons for the elderly and things like that. And so we do have what we call uh, City Ride service, which is duplicative to access services, but is for different reasons as well. I just, I, I wonder as we're thinking about how to allocate what is an increasingly narrow pie, <laughs> looking for efficiencies and ways to eliminate things that may be duplicative, um, just I think we need to all be doing. Right, so. and, that, and that is one of the things that we will be looking at in the TSA. Okay, good, thank you. Um, the other thing I just wanted to note generally, we, we, I think we all have pretty clear-eyed understanding of where we are with the budget and how difficult these conversations are going to be. And you know, I hear you about the costs of everything. That's not gonna change, right? Gas isn't going to get cheaper. Wages aren't going to go down now that we've you know, just um, given the approval to raise them. So I don't foresee those costs coming down at all. So. I think we're still going to potentially be looking at a deficit in future years. So while we're having these conversations, are we thinking about year three, year five, year seven from now? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think having transportation services is fundamental to what I think we at DOT provide. And if we looked at our ridership during COVID and, and looking at who our customers continue to be, that's what we need to get back to, who are our core customers and what services can we afford to provide while staying true to that commitment that we have to provide transit services. So while costs will continue to increase, 
this allows us an opportunity to take a step back and look at what services are fundamental to, to um, our mission and how can we continue to provide those services in a more efficient way. So thank you. I'm glad to hear that that is what you'll be doing. How do we learn that information from you? Well, um, you know, one is we're happy to share with you um, what the genesis of the TSA will be and then um, have continued communication. Part of the process will be in community engagement and receiving feedback from our customers, but also um, some of our sister agencies who we coordinate with um, and having report backs to this body, we would be happy to share that as if we make progress. All right, great. Thanks, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes, I have one question. Go ahead, Hat. Um, you know, I think I just wanted to flag something given some of the attractions, cultural destinations and attractions in, in my district. We, you know, I think a lot of the work that we're thinking about related to transit tra in Los Angeles has been thought about in the context of the LA 28 Olympic Games and really trying to get towards a car-free games um, possibility. And I think for me, as I think about millions of, potentially millions of tourists coming to Los Angeles for the Olympics, for the World Cup. I have been increasingly um, wondering how we're gonna enable those tourists who are coming in for these events to also go and visit our other most visited tourist sites. And actually on this committee, you have three, two members who have the top three visited tourist sites in the entire city, so Venice Beach, Griffith Observatory and the Hollywood sign are the three most frequently visited tourist destinations. And for the Griffith Observatory and for the Hollywood sign, we don't really have good ways of using public transit or connecting to our existing public transit to allow visitors to get to them and to enjoy those um, facilities. So I think for me, as we think about this next TSA, and as we think about our dash bus services particularly, I, w I really see them as an opportunity for us to create car-free ways to see our tourist attractions and also help us to manage tourism to those locations. What we're seeing particularly at the Hollywood sign is an influx of uh, single vehicles, cars that are coming in, bringing tourists in and then DOT is being asked to manage them through other means. And we could actually use our dash bus system and our transit system to manage the inflow of tourists into that area, make it a lot more regulated, minimize the impact to the surrounding communities, reduce the costs of enforcement, of traffic enforcement around that area, and make it into the kind of experience, like a world-class tourist experience, which Right now, it's amazing. I'm so proud of it. But it is not the kind of world-class tourist experience I think that you get in other sites or in other countries when you go to these locations. But I think we can do that. And it, it doesn't have to be that expensive. We have the resources to do that right now. So I just want to make sure that that's on your agenda as you think through this. I think it can actually serve to economize how we're thinking about serving these areas as we go forward because of the lowered costs of traffic enforcement. Um, and I think it can really help us move us towards our broader goals of transit usage and our climate goals um, all in one. So I, I'm really excited about it. I want to say that our office is here to support you in every way and in, in ensuring that we think about this as central to our work um, as we move forward. And um, you know, tourist revenues are an important part of our general fund <laughs> receipts. And um, I want to be supportive of bringing more tourists here, but can't be unless the impacts on my constituents are managed more effectively. So I look forward to working with all of you to make sure that we can get to those goals. Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple of mm -hmm. questions. Um, I, how does um, the DOT track grants that identify Prop A as a, a local match? Go ahead, David. I'll ask David Summers to speak to that. Okay. 
Yeah, Councilmember David Summers, LADOT. Uh, well, we um, we have a Google Sheet, <laughs> and uh, and we uh, uh, for for all of our grants, um, uh, we uh, track the Prop A front funds, and it all goes into you know all of our budget preparation. So you know all of that is all of that is on hand when we're uh, preparing our budget requests in terms of how much money that we're going to need. Uh, to pay the front funds and a match for a given budget year. It also helped in doing the Prop A itself, organizing ourselves to to better understand, um, you know, in the next five years or four years when we're going to actually need uh, those the, those those uh, the front funds and the match for 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 grants that have a longer time horizon. So uh, the Prop A itself uh, forecast helped discipline us in that exercise and even be better organized. Um, you know, just to have the information at our fingertips. So, um, uh, but yeah, we actively manage uh, what, what our what our funding needs uh, will be. And then um, I, I don't know if this is something you want to answer, but I think that we need to know really as we're forecasting and going into budgets and deficits. But how? What's the impact of not collecting um, dash fares? And um, do we anticipate fair collection beginning anytime soon? We estimate that the lost revenue um, is in the area of $12 million per year. Um, we continue to be fare free on our dash lines. We do charge a fare on our commuter express and LA now and um, our other services, but Dash continues to be fare free. That is one of the things that we want to take a look at. What are the implications of continuing to be uh, fare free and um, coming back with a recommendation? Thank you. Are there any other questions, members? Okay, um, then I'd like to continue this item. Um, I'd like to instruct the CAO to report back on June 5th following the 24-25 budget process and provide recommendations for addressing our structural deficit. And um, instruct the DOT to report back on June 5th as well with an overview of the elements and timelines for updated transit service analysis. Thank you. Okay, members. I'm going to move over to item number three. Mr. Clerk, can you please uh, read the next item, number three? Item three is a discussion item only. General Manager, Los Angeles Department of Transportation, to present verbal report relative to the department's ongoing projects and programs, transit services offered by the department, the state of mobility for pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles within the city of Los Angeles and recognition of LADOT employees for outstanding service. Thank you, Madam GM. Uh, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Um, it's always great to have the opportunity to recognize and introduce you and the public to outstanding LADOT team members. Today I have joining me four individuals um, who um, represent the best of the city, and I'm happy um, to highlight them for you today. So first, if I can um, ask Shireen Sedrupour to join me up here. Okay. Shireen is an environmental affairs officer who joined LEDOT in 2021 after working at the Port of Los Angeles for 14 years. She joined Delhi DOT to lead the Universal Basic Mobility Pilot Program, which is a $30 million pilot to increase equity in the city by expanding access to transportation, specifically in South Los Angeles. In this role, Shireen and her team launched one of the most innovative programs in transportation in the nation, the Universal Basic Mobility, or UBM, program which provides a suite of mobility options to residents of South Los Angeles, including increasing access to programs like car share and bike share, installing new electric vehicle chargers on streets, at parks, and libraries, 
implementing low stress neighborhood street active transportation infrastructure and launching Los Angeles' first electric bicycle library, which we just launched that this week. Um, we, we've also looked at expanding electric transit options and training Angelinos through a workforce development program to maintain electric assets. So not just introdu introducing mobility options, but also ensuring long-term economic opportunities for South Los Angeles residents. Shireen is committed to advancing equity and sustainability at LADOT. In addition to leading UBM, she has also led the adoption of the department's first ever biodiversity plan and zero waste plan. Shireen's creativity, dedication, collaborative spirit, and can-do attitude is appreciated by our DOT colleagues and agency partners. Please join me in congratulating Shireen on being an outstanding performer. Thank you so much. Um, next. <laughs> don't, go, don't go far, though. Don't go far. We'll take pictures after. Um, if I can ask Benny Wong to join me. <laughs> Benny Wong began his career in public service with LEDOT in October of 2019. He started serving as an office services assistant in the parking adjudication division. In this capacity, Benny managed the public service desk, coordinating hearings and resolving issues with empathy and professionalism, both qualities that we know are fundamental to building trust with the community. In October 2020, Benny joined the accounting division as an accounting clerk specializing in billing and receivables. His contributions have significantly streamlined collection services, resulting in a timely preparation of invoices and consi consistent follow-up on outstanding billings. Due to his collection efforts, LEDOT has been able to contribute its fair share to making payroll, paying vendors, and serving the public. Moreover, Benny's proactive communication approach has, has helped ensure timely payment of outstanding accounts, preventing the referral to collection agencies. So you want Benny calling you. You don't want a collection agency. These efforts have helped the department foster strong partnerships with numerous businesses and agencies operating within the community. Because of his contributions and dedication, dedication to upholding the standards of integrity and accountability, Benny has, has been recognized today as an outstanding performer for LADOT. Thank you, Benny. He has some for you, and don't go far. <laughs> uh, next, if I can ask Eduardo Hermoso to join me. <laughs> Eduardo clearly has a fan club here and is a transportation engineer working for LEDOT's West Los Angeles Development Review Division. During his career, he has always been recognized as a hard worker with impeccable attention to detail and strong problem solving skills. He was promoted to the West Los Angeles Development Review Team in 2021. During the, in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, being asked to assist with onboarding entry level staff who were all working remotely while simultaneously ensuring that applicants were being responded to. This team also had to face an unprecedented number of building permit applications, specifically in West Los Angeles, um, a number which has not subsided to date. Thanks to his previous experience working with building applicants that included some of DOT's Development Services Center in downtown Los Angeles, Eduardo was able to hit the ground running and quickly become the go-to person in the office for all challenging development review matters both over-the-counter services and larger developments that required a more comprehensive transportation impact assessment. Eduardo is friendly, has a, has led by ex, uh, has a lead by example style management and ingratiates himself to his staff and supervisors and enables his group to keep up with the tremendous workload and hit all of the performance goals, including advancing affordable housing projects that are eligible under the ED1 streamlining process. 
but wait, there's more. <laughs> in addition to Eduardo's role in development review process, he is also regularly called upon to support LEDOT's special traffic operations by assisting with traffic control for many events that Los Angeles hosts throughout the year, including the recent Los Angeles Marathon. Yeah. Please join me in thanking Eduardo for his dedication to LEDOT and to the city and to the public. Don't go far. <laughs> um, and lastly, I'd like to ask Jonathan Lean Tag to join me. Jonathan joined LEDOT in October 2016 as a senior accountant one at the revenue collection section of the accounting division. After gaining experience over years, Jonathan is now a fiscal system specialist too oversees payroll functions, revenue collection, special fund accounting, and financial reporting. Jonathan manages a large group of professional and clerical staff in the accounting and payroll division. He leads by example to demonstrate LEDOT's values of financial integrity and accountability. He took the lead role in coordinating with various internal stakeholders, external contractors, the banking industry and information technology professionals, and completed major milestones for the complex banking transaction and merchant services transition in June 2022 and December 2023, respectively. Jonathan embraces challenges and demonstrates excellent organization and leadership skills throughout the transition process. The completion of the major milestones of the banking and merchant services transition allowed LEDOT to continue collecting revenues that support various transportation programs. In addition to his professional experiences, knowledge, and skills, Jonathan always goes above and beyond to assist whenever he can. His commitment to responsiveness and follow through contributes to the timely delivery of projects and programs. Jonathan's work ethic, dedication, and his leadership brings forth the excellent administrative support and financial soundness of LED DOT projects and programs. Please join me in congratulating Jonathan on his recognition today. <laughs> Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you so much, Madam General Manager. Um, thank you all for what you have done for the city. And thank you to your employees that work so diligently. We know that it's a labor of love. And, and we just wanted to show that appreciation. And we appreciate everything that you do to keep Los Angeles moving. So you all have plaques, right? It's, or, or certificates that you can hang on your wall uh, just to, to show how much we appreciate your hard work. Because that's what happens, right? We all go to work every day and nobody notices. So we're trying to change, we're trying to change that climate and just say thank you. Um, should I adjourn first and then get a picture? Okay. Well, I just go can ahead. I just say yeah. one thing. I just want to say thank you. I think I mentioned this before. This is the only department that regularly does this in the committee. I don't know when this tradition started, but I really love it. And thank you to all four of you, to Benny, to Eduardo, to Jonathan, to Sharon. Thank you for doing your best for the city of Los Angeles. We're really grateful for it. Um, and especially as a council office that deals with departments all the time, the nitty gritty of the work that you do matters so much for our constituents. And you take that nitty gritty really seriously. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Uh, Mr. Clerk, is there any other business in committee today? The desk is clear. Well, thank you. Committee members, members of the public, the meeting is adjourned. We'd like to take some uh, photos with you if it's okay.